In today's video, we are going to take the font parser we implemented and use it to render some text on the screen using OpenGL. My name is Emil and you're watching MyVar and I hope you enjoy. So we're going to start off by just implementing some basic data types. For example, in this case, we're doing size, rect, point and color. As well as draw buffer. And draw buffer is a little bit... Uh, misnamed right now because right now it's just directly drawing the things on the screen but eventually the goal is to go ahead and make this multi-threaded and then we will instead buffer up these draw commands and then execute them in a different thread so that's why we're naming it like that for now and this is a great exercise in don't be lazy and just do the right thing from the start um, because yeah so I tried using the latest version of OpenTK here um, but it doesn't have anti-aliasing support, so I thought, okay, I'll go back to the old ver older version that I know. But that didn't end up working either, so... yeah. And then the, I was porting over some code from my game engine, you know, like the matrixy code, and the, the um, shaders loading code and all, and all of those things, and the mesh rendering and so on. And um, there was a bug when I was upgrading to the... from 3.1... 3.2 plus, I think I went to 4.6 in this case, where you have to bind an array buffer before you can call draw elements, and oh, that just drove me nuts. But yeah, here you can see me trying to be lazy again. I tried to draw a line without using a shader, <laughs> and in the end, I ended up having to make a shader because, yeah. Anyway, so uh, this is the shader I used. This is an old shader, um, so I had to kind of update it. And so yeah, you know, just did that. Then I loaded in the shader code from shader code from my old implementation from my game engine. I just cleaned it up, removing stuff I don't need, more irrelevant stuff, so on and so on. And um, yeah, here I'm getting an, an orthographic matrix, and later I'll be adding the uh, transform and scale matrix. There we go, and eventually should have a line drawing. In the orthographical uh, projection matrix, I did screw up and made that the origin is in the lower left, and I thought I did this right, so I just tried to work around it by creating a scale matrix with the Y component being negative one. But later I corrected this, realizing what an ink and poop I was being. Yeah. So now I'm just disabling, you know, dev testing and call facing and all that stuff so that the 2D rendering works properly. And oh, we're implementing the multiplication and there we go. See that there's a negative one I was talking about, which is my own stupidity. Uh, that's always fun. And I'm just trying to make the line width stuff work eventually. Yeah, there we go. I got it. Then I moved on to implementing draw rectangle. In the end, I did end up deleting the draw line code completely. Because, um, yeah, it didn't work and I wasn't feeling like debugging it. So, there we go. And we're doing the draw rectangle and I forgot to update the underscore line shader to underscore rect shader, which my own copy and paste madness. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> there we go. And I was trying to cheat again by using the gel begin because I'm lazy and ended up having to actually implement a mesh uh, using uh, IBOs and VBOs. Uh, I could have saved myself so much time if I just went directly for the proper um, approach instead of trying to cheat and be lazy. Uh, story of my life. So yeah, we it's a uh, one a rectangle that's one by uh, one by one by one by one the square, and then we're using a scale and transform matrix to move it according to how you want to draw the rectangle or the square. Yeah, and then finally, I got a rendering. Uh, I I had some problems here, um, and so I decided to use render doc, and render doc only works with three point two and above contexts, and so. Again, every time I upgrade it, the render doc didn't work. <laughs> and because the entire screen would just be black uh, because of that array buffer being missing. And um, so that was a little bit frustrating, but eventually we got there, I believe, I hope. 
Yeah, okay, so at this point I'm... I am trying to make render doc work, but it just didn't want to work because again, when I upgraded to new context, the old code that I just copied and pasted out of my game engine wasn't working properly because I was using an older context so that it works on older hardware as well as modern hardware, which apparently not. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was just debugging and debugging and then going slowly. That's kind of normal for programming, unfortunately. Trying to check which buffers are empty and which aren't. I was getting confused because it was doing a, uh, it was creating a buffer. When I was calling um, uh, draw elements, it was creating a buffer and then putting data in that buffer. And I don't know if OpenGL tries to create an array buffer under the hood or whether it's OpenTK that's doing it when you don't bind one yourself. Um, which, but it's trying to like put data inside the array buffer and that's why it's kept on crashing. So you just had to bind an empty one and it didn't do that then. Um, yeah, but there we go. I got, I kind of got frustrating. I actually did not manage to fix it. Uh, so I just moved on and after I made the, the character rendering work, I then went back and fixed it. And I was using an old context because OpenTK allows you to set the samples, uh, which I'm doing at the moment there. Uh, trying to do anti-aliasing for you, but it didn't work. I think it's because my specific driver doesn't want to play along. I'm using Linux. I don't know. Um, so what I ended up having to do is again, stop being lazy <laughs> and just implement a multi-sample to render target, uh, which is what I ended up doing. But here you can see me spending hours upgrading and downgrading, trying different versions and alas, nothing. So I ended up upgrading to the latest version of, of OpenTK and just simply, um, you know, uh, using a multi-sampled render target. But yeah, before I, I got there, I got frustrated, like I said, and I moved on and implemented the text, uh, the, the glyph layout stuff for writing an entire string. And now this was buggy and I didn't realize it at the time, but I have fixed it since after recording this. And I'll just add in a little screenshot at the end so you can properly look at at the rendering. Um, yeah, there we go. So we're looping over every character in the string and then here I'm just caching the glyphs so I don't regenerate the mesh every time and adding all the offsets, and, you know, making spaces add spaces and tabs add tabs. And go. Ah, here we go. So now I'm upgrading to a new version of OpenTK, the latest version. They moved open over to gel, um, what is it called? Gel F or gel W? I don't know. Um, and instead of their own native implementation, and they haven't added the option back in to do the window hint stuff with um, um, anti-aliasing. Um, so it should be possible for them to make that work again, but that was not implemented yet because of the rewrite in OpenTK's case. So I ended up, like I said, I just got frustrated and just ended up using a multi-sampled render target. And here, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, if you look at render dog, it's screaming at me, invalid buffer binded, invalid buffer binded. Um, and I just didn't understand because I, I was checking the buffers over and over and I did bind the IBO and the VBO properly every time. Um, but in the end, it wanted me to bind an, bind an array buffer. Now, I should just read and think about what I'm reading because it said it wants an array buffer. But yeah, I ended up reading on some obscure forum somewhere that, yeah, when you go to the new version, you must bind an array buffer, which... Uh, there we go, so now I'm blitting it to the screen and finally we have anti-aliasing. There we go, as you can see. And so what I'm going to do now is there's a resizing bug where, um, uh, which I think this is a bug in OpenTK. The window itself, uh, is size, width and height, is not getting set before the event. It gets set after the event. So you had to use the event argument to properly resize the, the screen. And... That took me a while to figure out. And also I wasn't disposing the old render target properly. And so I fixed that as well. 
Um, yeah, so the line count didn't work, so I just removed that. And um, yeah, let's see. Uh, now I'm doing the resize code. And yeah, so what you can see is I initially I thought, oh, maybe it's trying to render while I'm resizing and that's screwing things up, but that wasn't the case. Um, so yeah, like I said, so I had to use the event arguments for the resizing and properly delete and dispose the buffers. And um, you should see in a second here that it resizes properly. Yeah, look at that. So I'll include the little um, uh, the screenshot for you guys. And um, yeah, do subscribe if you're enjoying the content. And please let me know if you have any suggestions. And I'll see you next time.